Just to be clear, a tiny house is not a caravan. This is a real house, mobile, because it's on wheels. And you're going to be able to fit in these tiny houses in just 28 square metres more than you can fit into your studio, your traditional studio in a condo. I know that because I build them. So I'm going to give you a walk around because with the frame up now, you can start to picture the different rooms and what's coming where. So first of all, you're going to be going in through a bifold or a concertina door, which is a metre fifty wide. So that's a lot of space if you've got to take in a sofa or any furniture at any time. This is lovely. So let's walk in through because your first stop in this particular model is going to be the kitchen. Now obviously we're governed by four metres in height. So if you want like a, an idea of the height of the kitchen ceiling, I'm 180, which is six foot and you can see that I still fit inside this kitchen without having to duck. So if that's a guide for the height for you. So if we bring the camera inside, we can start to give you a walk around. So in the first area, like I just explained, you're going to be coming into the kitchen in this particular model. And I can literally fit a full kitchen in here. Most of the time in a studio, you just get a little kitchenette. But imagine in this tiny house, we're going to have the sink here. Great, we can do the washing up and you've got the window. In this front section, we're going to have a gas cooker. Everything has to be gas in here. So we're going to have gas. We're going to have our gas uh, oven, if you want an oven. We have enough space to do that. Then your hob and your hood. Your hood will vent to the outside. And then we still have plenty of size for a full-size fridge and freezer, which is fantastic. So as I walk back through now, we're coming into the living room. Now this is all open planned, which is great. You can serve, etc., etc. And the idea of the living room is you would basically have your sofa here, which can be a sofa bed, because that means another two people can sleep here. And on the other side here, we will have our television. Now I've deliberately spaced out the windows to be plenty wide enough that you could actually get a 50 inch screen in there is a nice flat LED. Plenty of room. So let's have a look upstairs to the bedroom. Now, this is big enough that you can get a queen size bed up there, and it's all designed to do so. There will be a cutout which will come soon, and proper stairs. You will actually go up a staircase up into the bedroom. Now obviously it's a tiny house, things are much smaller, but the idea is you get a queen size bed, you get your bedside cabinets, and there will be plenty of storage all the way around. I'm now at the back side of the tiny house, and you can see that we have another loft bedroom up the top, that's just a single bedroom. This one won't have a staircase, this one will have a ladder. Then underneath it, we have our bathroom. This will actually have a full wall right the way across with a door in the, in the center that slides. So that gives me a bathroom that is 2.5 meters long by 1.2 meters wide. So I can have a really good sized shower in here. I can have a basin here, which is my sink next to the window and the toilet on the, um, on the other side. Now the toilet has got two drainage systems. If you were on a resort, you would join the toilet into the mains. If you find yourself off grid in the middle of a rice field somewhere, these are actually compost toilets. So they have a chemical tank that can be removed and emptied. So I think that gives you a good first look and a good imagination of what can actually be built here with a tiny house. Because as I said before, this is not a caravan. This is actually a house. It's just on wheels. So the next part of the build is to actually put a wrap around the outside. It's not a technique that's used in Thailand very much. So I'll explain it as I build it. This type of construction, when you're making a frame, needs to have a building membrane. It's also commonly known as house wrap. And in our particular case, because Thailand is such a hot country, we're going to be using the foiling membrane system. 
because I need to reflect the sun's rays back out. But these, these wraps are incredibly clever. Not only is this going to make a secondary waterproof barrier, but it's also breathable, which allows your insulation behind to actually work at full efficiency. But unfortunately, when you get those cheaper versions of these tiny houses or etc., this is going to be one of the items that gets forgotten or deliberately left out. So be careful about that when you're going to buy something. To strengthen these papers, there is actually a mesh. It's almost like having a mesh of fishing line that's been sewn into it. So it really makes the, the paper very, very strong. We're going to overlap then and tape all the joints once again with that foil tape. With all of the windows and doors, we run a diagonal cut through the paper and then we actually return the paper around the frame itself. So all of the window frames and returns will also have the foil covering. Foil wrapping done, the tiny house oven ready, just in time for our PVC wood cladding to arrive. The wood pattern printing onto these PVC panels has really come on leaps and bounds in the last few years. And it's not just the printed pattern, it actually has a wood texture. Most people will not know the difference between the PVC and the real wood. So talking about things moving on, we've now got to move on to the metal sheet cladding. And what I say about moving on is traditionally I would have used a wooden button to do all of this, but we're now going to use a zinc plated alloy metal button. You can also use these for suspended ceilings. Now basically 
you have the metal frame that's already in place that's the structure we screw the buttons onto the frame and then the metal cladding gets screwed onto the buttons easy really cladding my metal sheet cladding has arrived for the second time the first time it arrived nearly every single sheet was scratched unbelievable i'm guessing that must have happened in the transport in the back of the truck you can imagine them sliding around in the back of the truck and it basically just scratched everything but to be fair to the company they changed everything for me which was absolutely brilliant that was a really good service and in addition to that, they've also made, specially made, all of the edging trims that we're going to need. So this is the part that really makes your professional finish when you go around your windows, go around your doors and making up your corner beads. So it's going to come on very, very nicely. Take a look at this. Now, not every piece is standard. This bulkhead section has been specially for us been measured, shaped, pressed, ready to fit exactly into that section. A very busy day for some. With these claddings, obviously the outside cladding that you see is your primary weather barrier with the um, foil barrier on the inside being the secondary. But the perfect solution, of course, is that water from the rain never gets to that secondary barrier. That's uh, just not what we want at all. So every time there's a weak point, which is basically a joint or a corner, we're using roof flashing. This is actually a bitumen tape. And again, it's not cheap. But you'll find this mostly on the roof of your house. Perhaps it's going around some of your Velux roof windows or maybe around a chimney. But the basic principle is that this is completely taped onto the joint, making your water seal. And then your finished corner bead comes on the top. That makes the finish that you can see here. And of course, the attention to detail is the screws are actually the same color as the cladding. That makes a really nice finish. Now you must have noticed now, that as you followed the build, there are no materials here that are going to rust, corrode or rot away. I mean, it's a far cry away from what used to be the old caravan builds. The caravan manufacturers that were only used to give a lifetime of about 10 to 15 years. In fact, at 20 years, you had to remove your caravan or your static mobile home off of the sites at that 20 year barrier but I think you've seen from this baby, you're gonna be handing this over to your grandchildren and beyond. Nice one. So I'm gonna leave you now with a nice reveal and the drone shots around the outside. You can see exactly what we've got and I'll see you next time for the test drive. Bailoi, bailoi, bailoi. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
If you'd like to watch more videos like this on what Pattaya and Thailand have to offer, then click on the link up here. If you'd like to see what property promotions we currently have, then click on the link down here. If you generally just like to follow the channel, uh, then please like and subscribe. It's not going to cost you a penny, you just have to click the button. And if you ring that notification bell, you'll never miss any up and coming videos.